Ever since Maul's story was reintroduced into the Star Wars storyline, tons of the speculation has centered around which character it will be to finally put an end to Maul. The most obvious speculation has been that either one of Ezra or Kanan will be the ones to finally destroy Maul. In Kanan's case, this makes sense, as he's the much more highly trained between the two. And it's not outlandish to imagine a scenario in which Ezra is fighting Maul and Kanan is the only one capable of saving him. Or possibly that Ezra is being seduced to the dark side by Maul, and that Kanan does the only thing he can to save his friend and Padawan. If Ezra were to be the one to kill Maul, you'd have to think that same scenario of him being seduced to the dark side would still be in play. At least a little bit. Maybe comparable to how we see Luke get pulled toward the dark side a little bit in his final confrontation with Darth Vader. And although I wouldn't be upset to see a big final confrontation between Ezra and Maul, it just feels too obvious for things to go that way. The eventual learning of Maul's fate is, for many people at least, the most intriguing aspect of the entire series at this point. So you almost have to assume that Maul will indeed meet his end. But I like to think that it will happen in a way that's maybe not the most predictable. Also into the mix now is Obi-Wan Kenobi, who as of the mid-season trailer for season 3, we know will have a confrontation of some kind with Maul. And many people seem to fall into the camp that we will indeed see one last battle between these two old rivals. As for me, I'm not sure what to believe in regards to that, but I do feel fairly comfortable in assuming that Obi-Wan will not be the person who finally destroys Maul. After all, we've kind of seen that scenario play out once already. Do we really need to see it again? Maybe the two of them are kind of over it with the whole feud they've had over the years. Each of them has suffered tremendous losses at one another's hand, and perhaps they can find common ground against one enemy, Emperor Palpatine. But alas, none of those are who I think will be actually responsible for killing Maul. While characters like Kanan and Ezra have had a very recent rocky history in dealing with Maul here and there, the overall impact that Maul has had on their lives is fairly minimal, blindness notwithstanding. If there's one character in all of Rebels who's had much of their entire life affected by the actions of Maul, it is none other than Sabine Wren. Maul helped throw all of Mandalore into some serious disarray, and Sabine's family, as well as others close to them, were heavily involved in all of that. We've now seen some of the fallout of that firsthand in recent episodes, and perhaps one of the most telling aspects of that is just how wide everyone's eyes get at the sight of the Darksaber. So, we have a character that's been a fixture throughout the whole series, who has slowly had her storyline develop deeper and deeper. Lately, that storyline has been a huge focus in recent episodes, much of that centering around the Darksaber, which has an important connection to Maul. Then throw in the subplot of Sabine being disgraced in the eyes of her family. A traitor she's even been labeled. And if redemption and acceptance from her family is something Sabine seeks, and she does, they're building up an awful lot of story lately for her to not get those things. And for her to be fully redeemed by her family and her family to be redeemed in the eyes of the rest of Mandalore, it's almost necessary that Maul goes down by Sabine's hand as she wields the Darksaber. A few episodes back, when Sabine was asked about the Darksaber, her first description of its significance was, I know it caused my family nothing but trouble after Maul took it. Now, it is possible that they devoted an entire episode of the show to training Sabine to fight with the Darksaber simply for the purpose of her eventually battling and defeating Gar Saxon. It's possible. But it feels like there's very much work left to do for Sabine. It feels like they've built things up for her to have more in store. And that's what takes us back to the notion that Sabine has the most at stake with Maul. His fingerprints are all over a handful of negative aspects of her life. And by defeating him, things can finally really start to be made right. So that's my theory on where I think things are going with Sabine's character, her eventual comeback after some time with her family, and the eventual fate of Maul. Obviously, we'll find out in the coming weeks whether or not this all pans out to be true, but hey, it was fun to come up with some ideas anyway. But what do you think is going to happen with these characters to finish out Season 3 of Rebels? Let me know your own theories as well as what you thought of mine down below in the comments. Also, if you felt this video was worthy of a like, I always appreciate that. But above all else, everybody, thanks so much for watching.